Now we're going to go on and look at natural gas here. Um, and starting with uh, the facts of natural gas, units come in cc's. And again, the power source is BTUs, which will be important later. Not sure. I didn't get a chance to research the percentage efficiency. Profits are still very high. Um, and externalities are high, but generally considered lower than coal and oil. So perhaps a more preferable system just based on the facts. The reserves obviously have a lot to do with technological improvement and also exploration. And we'll take a look at that in a little bit more detail in a minute. As you know, natural gas is found in the earth. And once drilled, it flows up through the wells um, into large pipelines again, which we tend to not like. Natural gas burns more cleanly than other fossil fuels, and fewer emissions of sulfur, carbon, nitrogen than coal or oil, um, and leaves almost no ash or particles. Um, we do worry about the carbon dioxide that's produced, and certainly we worry about um, uh, we worry about methane that that emits from the process, which is a much stronger greenhouse gas. And we do worry about how the gas is moved and used and stored and transported. And we worry about the threat to watersheds when um, water is used in the fracking process, which I'll get to in a minute. And here's the note on methane. Um, we worry about methane leakage. Although methane stays in the environment for a shorter amount of time than CO2, it's, it's anywhere between 15 to 20 times more powerful greenhouse gas than CO2. So one of the knocks on natural gas is methane emissions. Um, so natural gas use has, um, is used in a lot of different industries and for a lot of different points. Um, as prices rose for natural gas, the use of hydraulic fracturing or fracking became economically viable. It used to be too expensive, and I'll explain what that is in a minute. However, in many cases, new externalities are created in the pursuit of reserves. So now all of a sudden, we thought we were running out of natural gas in this country, for example, and now we're finding more only through new technology. So this is the standard process by which natural gas is, is gotten, again, a very, um, a very complex, um, a very centralized system where control is, is in a few, a few companies, um, a very open loop system, lots of ecosystem risk, um, and definitely high infrastructure needs as you see in this diagram here. It takes, there's a long process by the time it gets to, into its usable form in homes and consum uh, consumers and businesses, etc. I talked a little bit about fracturing. Um, some of the environmental ob objections are, well before I get to that, let's look at the diagram here. Um, if you start at the upper left, for example, roughly 200 tanker trucks deliver water to the fracturing process, which tells you these are generally in, in relatively remote locations without um, running water. The pumper injects a mix of sand water and chemicals, and I use the term chemicals in quotes here because uh, right now the fracking industry has not revealed the types of chemicals it's using. Benzene is considered to be one of them. Um, and what ends up happening is those fluids go down into this very, very deep well, which is well below the water table and where well water comes from, by the way. Um, and what's happening here is that the, the chemicals and the pressure and the water are freeing up deposits of natural gas that were previously unavailable. That natural gas comes back up out of here. It gets um, put into a truck, sent off the storage tanks, and then goes eventually into pipelines and into the market pretty darn exciting if you think about it. Just from a purely factual and systems point of view, it's actually pretty brilliant to be able to get um, oil and gas like this. Um, we do worry, though, that there's a lot of impacts or negative externalities of the system, such as um, there's been a, a cases of well water contamination. Given this diagram, it's hard to imagine how that happens, but there's some pretty well documented cases. Um, what happens to the waste water, and how is that removed, and is it removed responsibly? Um, the trucks are creating lots of devastation on the roads and destroying the roads, lots of methane emissions. Um, EPA study recently came out that said that fracking is not dangerous. However, that study is due to be updated in 2014, and I'll include that in this course as soon as it comes out. So, hmm, again, ethical dimensions here that follow. So um, just a little bit more on the experience here of, of what this natural gas is bringing is high levels of comfort and convenience at a lower in environmental impact. Uh, however, the sensory impacts, if you live in the area, and again, a lot of these energy sources have huge, huge impacts on locals, but, not, but really minimum negative impacts on those that are benefiting from it. So it's hard to argue against fracking when so much of the society is dependent on the resources to enjoy the comforts. But the impact on local people, as I was just mentioning, is very real. And there are many, many lawsuits against the gas companies. Uh, for suffering that families are, are incurring from this process. So that brings us to the final 
uh, perspective, which is the ethical, cultural, societal perspective, and the question about whether fracking is something that uh, that is something that should be pursued. And maybe some of you have seen the movie Gasland, which has uh, documented the impacts of fracking on the natural environment, on local residents. Um, the worldview, again, this is still an outdated energy mode considering where we're heading now. So societal benefits are gigantic. Societal costs are pretty high in terms of local disruption and exploitation of land and people. And then globally, the societal costs for future generations of burning this um, natural gas is actually pretty high. So um, the ethical dimensions begin to come into play here. In summation, oh, this is a little, sorry, the animations are a little bit out. Natural gas brings comfort and convenience to millions of people. It's an unpleasant substance, and fracking sites are unattractive and emit bad odors, just from an experience point of view. Um, it's considered a transitional energy source to renewables. I think that might be a typo. It's probably considered a more preferable option to oil and coal. It's still financially lucrative. Yeah, that's a typo. So one of the things about natural gas from a systems point of view is that it can um, start up and start down very quickly to generate electricity, which will be important later. So sorry about those typos. Uh, it's still, still an open loop system with huge disposal problems and certainly impacts local ecosystems uh, at some level, especially wastewater and, and other eco ecological systems. And again, in culture and society, we warned about the ethical proposition. So as a sustainable designer, again, we're looking at if we had to use fossil fuels, we would prefer to use gas, natural gas. And if we live in areas that have a natural gas line, then as a mechanical engineer, or a sustainable designer, you're certainly looking for the opportunity to, um, to make that happen with natural gas. But ultimately, we'd like to wean ourselves off of fossil fuels completely for the reasons that were described today. And in the next to last lecture, we'll get more into the impacts of this.